Let's now go over some of the most basic file manipulation commands in Linux. First of all, Linux differs from Windows in the sense that file extensions do not really matter. They are often there, they are still used uh, as normal, but that's either a convention to help humans or it's because some programs actually do look at the extensions. But overall, Linux per se doesn't care about this. One important distinction that matters at many points in Linux is uh, whether a file is a text file or not. Linux makes pretty intensive use of text files as configuration files. Scripts, which also often happen in Linux, especially if you're on a cluster, are of course also text files. And many system information files, I've already mentioned the proc directory, all of those files in there are technically also text files. And the opposite of that, would be a binary file. The main difference is that you cannot simply look into a binary file with a text editor and you cannot search the contents. You can see what type a file is with the file command. For example, in my demo directory, there's a JPEG file. And if I use file on that, you can see it isn't actually a JPEG file, it's a text file. It just has the ending JPG. For handling files, there are a couple basic commands. Most of those also work on directories. You can move directories around like files. You already know the ls command to list the directory contents and list file details. The command to rename a file or a directory is mv, it's short for move. The syntax is very simple, mv, old name, and new name. If you want to copy a file, that's the cp command for copy. Again, the syntax basically is very simple. There's one major pitfall. If you're moving an entire directory, you have to specify the option minus r for recursive. Otherwise, the contents of the directory are not copied. If you want to create a new directory, that's the mkdir command for Mac directory. If you want to create an empty file, you can use the touch command. That's not the original purpose of the touch command. It's actually there to modify the access times and creation times manually, but it's commonly used that way. And finally, if you want to remove a file or a directory, that's the rm command. Again, syntax is very simple, rm, then the file name. Same thing applies if you want to remove a whole directory, you have, have to specify the minus R option. There's one more option that you commonly see, and that's minus F. Minus F will force deletion. In other words, it will disable some safeguards that might prompt RM to ask you, are you actually sure you want to delete this? If you specify minus F, it will not ask it. It will just delete it immediately. Let's demonstrate these commands briefly. If I want to create a directory, that's mkdir and the directory name, and you can see one got added. If I want to rename that, that's mv testdir and the new name. That's the new name. If I want to copy it, will complain because I have to use the minus R command if it's a directory. And you can see it has been copied. The same thing if I want to remove the directory, it will complain again. Again, I have to use the minus R. If I just want to delete a file, I'm going to delete this one. I don't necessarily need the minus R flag. And you can see it's gone. So far every command has been for one file. You can however also specify multiple files by what's called a wildcard. A wildcard is a kind of placeholder that specifies a pattern. For example, all files that begin with T or something. It's also called globbing. If you ever see that term, it's the same thing. 
If you ever hear the term regular expression, that's kind of similar, but it's not the same thing. We're not going to cover it here. It's a rather complex topic. The most important wildcards are these three. The star or asterisk character matches zero or more characters. The question mark is exactly one character. And uh, if you want to specify a range of characters, like zero through nine, for example, uh, you do that in square brackets. You can combine these in multiple ways. You can see the man page or maybe Google it uh, for really complex combinations of these that you can use. Uh, it works like this. You can see that in my directory, I have two directories that start with test dill. Um, I can, for example, list list one. And you can see it will only list that directory content. If I want to list multiple, I can say test star. And now everything that starts with test in this directory gets listed. In this case, it's two directories, test year two and its contents, which are empty, test year three and its contents. And there's also a file called test.jpg, which also gets listed because it starts with test again. Now, if I want to actually find a directory or a file, I use the find command. The basic syntax is relatively simple again. You type find, you type where it is, that can again be a relative or an absolute path. And then you have a bunch of options. The most common option is this one, minus name. And that can be, for example, a file name. And it will find all files that match this name here in this directory and all its subdirectories. Here's another one that you often see, minus type F. If I were to type minus type D here, it would be looking for directories and not files. If I can leave it out, it will bo list both directories and files. You can modify all of these things in rather complex ways. And that also means that find is a really powerful tool. So you can, for example, combine the file name with wildcards again. You can also, with the use of other options, which are all listed in the man page, you can only list files that uh, have been modified after a certain date, for example, and really narrow it down to what you're looking for. In addition, one more thing the find command can do is execute a command, any Linux command, for every file that's found. For example, if you want to actually delete the files that you found, you just type minus exec and then rm and the syntax. Again, I won't go into detail, it's in the man page. But whatever command you specify after the exec will be executed with every file as an argument. One more thing that happens if you use wildcards in the find command, or really in general, you have to realize that the console will expand the wildcard pattern before it hands the text to the command. That's not limited to the find command, but it's especially common with the find command because if you specify something like this here, minus name, star test star, the find command will not see star test star because the console will be looking into that directory for everything that starts with test or that contains test in this case, and it will hand over to the find command the expanded string. And unfortunately, that expanded text will be multiple file names or directory names that have spaces in them and the find command won't know what to do. It expects minus name, space, then something. But if there's another space, it doesn't know what to do. In the case of the find command, the way to avoid this is you specify that text inside of quotes. It can be single or double quotes as long as they match. And what this will do is it will send this exact text to the find command. And in the case of the find command, the find command also knows what to do with these stars. Of course, not every program knows this. It's up to the developer to implement that, but uh, the find command knows it. Here's a quick demo that will hopefully make this clearer. When you type the ls command or the really any command with a wildcard in use, that will work but what the ls command sees is this. 
the console will expand the asterisk into these three different directory and file names before it hands to the ls command. And the ls command will see ls space and then an argument, another argument, and a third argument. And the ls command in this case can handle this because it's programmed that way. But the find command cannot do that. If I were to say minus name test star, I'm going to put an echo in front of it. Uh, we'll cover that later. That will just so show what the command sees. You can see now find command sees once again minus name and then a name and then it sees something that it didn't expect and doesn't know what to do with so it'll complain and you can see there's a syntax error now coming up but if I use the quotation marks then that exact text including the asterisk will be sent to the find command and the find command knows what to do with this.